Hey guys, today we're gonna to be making a lacto-fermented sauerkraut. So I think when it comes to fermenting foods, there's a lot out there that can be scary or feel intimidating, but I promise you if you have a few simple ingredients and follow a few basic steps, you can ferment your own vegetables at home and it's super easy, so let's get to it. So when it comes to making homemade sauerkraut, all you basically need is two ingredients. You need your cabbage and you need your salt. And so you can add anything else that you want. You can add all sorts of spices, garlic and peppercorns and juniper berries, and you can get really crazy with it. You can add other vegetables like carrots or apples, but you could also just keep it really simple, which is what we typically do and what we're gonna be doing today. So all we are going to be using is our cabbage and our salt. And so we're gonna be using our purple cabbage here. This is what we prefer to grow. We find that it's easier to grow, um, that it just does better, it grows better, bigger, beautiful heads. And we love the nutritional benefits that come with red cabbage over green cabbage. So red cabbage, um, because of those deep, rich colors, are gonna have more of your flavonoids, your polyphenols, antioxidants, these good cancer-fighting beneficial things are higher in the red cabbage than are gonna be in your green cabbage. Um, red cabbage also tends to be higher in vitamin A and vitamin C, um, but green cabbage is also great. It's also very nutrient-rich. There's a lot of benefits to eating it, so nothing wrong with it. You could, do, you could follow this exact same recipe with green cabbage and there would be nothing wrong with that. It would still be a super healthful product. And when you turn your cabbage into sauerkraut, the nutritional benefits just increase abundantly. And so not only are you getting, by fermenting it, not only are you getting the beneficial microbes and probiotics from the fermentation process, but it also increases in nutrients. And so actually like the amount of vitamin C in red cabbage increases times 10 once you lacto-ferment that cabbage and turn it into sauerkraut. So it's really, really amazing. And this is what people have been doing for centuries and centuries and centuries to preserve food to make it last longer. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. This is um, some of our cabbage that we harvested a couple months ago and it's starting to get to that point where I need to do something with it. And so we are gonna be turning it into sauerkraut. And so the first step is simply to shred your cabbage. And so you don't, you could do this with a food processor or you could do it by hand, which is what we're gonna be doing. You don't need to worry about making it perfect. Um, big shreds are okay, but you just wanna slice it into small shreds of sauerkraut. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so we have everything chopped now. And when I'm making sauerkraut, I like to make a lot at a time because as you can see, it is kind of a messy process. It takes some time. And so it's a bit of a labor of love. So I like to just do a lot all at one time and then have several jars that will last me for several months because it does store well in the fridge. And so that's what I usually do, but you could make this in smaller quantities, you could make a half a head of cabbage into sauerkraut at a time, or you can make as much as you want. You just make have to make sure you have a vessel here that's gonna be big enough to hold all of your sauerkraut to do this next step here. All right, so after it's all chopped and together, what you wanna do is, as quickly as you can, really, is you wanna get this salted. And so typically what I've heard is around one tablespoon per two pounds of cabbage or per head of cabbage, depending on how big your cabbage is. I don't usually measure, to be honest. I usually just pour in a bunch of salt. 
Um, and the, the purpose of the salt is for that fermentation process and to um, preserve the cabbage, but it's also, it's gonna help the cabbage release those juices. So the, ca the salt is going to make the cabbage release the juices, which is what is necessary to create the proper environment to ferment cabbage. And so the important thing, so a lot, one big thing that I hear from a lot of people that have trouble fermenting things is that they are seeing mold at the top of the jars, um, mold at the top of their cabbage, and how do you prevent that? So how you prevent that is by making sure you're creating an anaerobic environment for your sauerkraut to be in. So you wanna make sure that there is a liquid fully covering all of your cabbage when it's fermenting. So this will create that anaerobic environment and prevent mold from forming at the top of your cabbage. If there's cabbage that is sticking out the top, that's when mold can grow there if it is exposed to air. Um, but if it's all submerged under liquid, then that mold will not form. So that's kind of the thing. I have had a little bit form at the top before and as long as it's just like a little bit of white, I just scoop that part out and everything underneath it has been fine and it's not been a big deal. But if it's significant or you're noticing it throughout or anything like that, dump the jar. Um, but if it's just a little bit of white at the top, I usually just skim that off. Um, but as long as it's all submerged, the mold shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so I added probably, roughly about two tablespoons, maybe a little bit more of salt now to my two heads of cabbage. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just massaging all of that salt into my cabbage. And so what I'm gonna try to do is, this is where it's kind of a labor of love, and honestly, if you have time and you can just let that salt sit in that cabbage for an hour or two hours, it's gonna make your life easier because that's just gonna release all those juices and let the process happen more naturally. If you don't have time, you can start the process yourself, basically, which is what I'm gonna do here, um, basically just by massaging that cabbage and just trying to get those juices to release. So the goal of this is to release enough juices that you're gonna have the natural juices of the salted cabbage fill your cabbage in your jar. So you're gonna wanna release as many of those juices as possible. Now I've heard, I've seen recipes out there that just call for salt and cabbage and then filling it with filtered water. Um, I, I think you can do that. I've never done that personally and it kind of goes against kind of some of the traditional things that I've heard about how cabbage is prepared. So I think that that is a doable way to do it. That's not the method that I've used. I've always just allowed the natural juices of the sauerkraut, of the cabbage, um, the salted cabbage to cover the cabbage and create the anaerobic environment. But it's a labor of love. It takes time. It takes working with that cabbage and massaging it. So my strategy is typically to massage it for a while first with my hands and try to get as much of those juices. And then I usually use a wooden spoon and just kind of push it down as much as I can to just get as much of those juices released. And then once the jar juices really start coming, I'll just start packing it into jars. And I found that if you can just kind of start working it with a wooden spoon in the jars, it tends to release better just as you work with it, more will come out and you'll get there over time, but it does just take a while. So we're gonna go, we're gonna be working at that. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I've massaged it quite a bit. We are not at a point where I'm like, there's tons of liquid forming, but I'm gonna go ahead and transfer, start transferring this cabbage into jars because I find that often it's easier to really start working with it with a, um, like a wooden spoon to start mashing it down and you can get kind of more of those liquids to develop over time.
right, so we have our first batch of sauerkraut made here. And so as you can see, there is plenty of liquid covering all of the cabbage. There's not a lot of just cabbage hanging out at the top. And you can continue to just kind of push this down. Ideally, this would be covering it like even a half inch to an inch above your cabbage. And you want to make sure you leave enough headspace in the jar because when you do put a lid on it, um, the bubbles are going to start to form in the fermentation process. Um, and it can cause a bit of an explosion um, so that some of the liquid can be released over the top. So you might want to even consider storing your jar on you know, a plate or with something under it just in case it does kind of come up a little bit, which has happened to us once or twice. Um, but after it's all made and the juices are covering that cabbage, um, I don't use any special equipment. So there are lots of really cool fermentation crocks and special lids and all sorts of things that you can use for fermentation. I just have always used regular mason jars and it's worked great. And so when it's finished, I just put a regular lid on it and seal it up. And then maybe every day or two, you just wanna check it, you'll see the air bubbles start to form, meaning that that lactic acid is starting to build up and do its thing. And so you might just wanna burp the jars a little bit to let some of that air release um, so you don't get kind of an explosion of all those liquids. But other than that, and even I have forgotten to do that step before and it's been okay. Um, but other than that, that's it. So you're just gonna let this sit on the counter for I would say anywhere from four days if you're making your sauerkraut like and it's warm outside, it's 80 degrees in your kitchen, it's gonna ferment a lot faster than where we are now, it's winter, it's cold in our house, and so it's gonna take longer to ferment. So I would say anywhere as short as four days to as long as two weeks is kinda of gonna be the time when your sauerkraut will be ready. But after you know you start getting to day six or seven, I would just start checking it, opening it up, smelling it, maybe tasting it, and seeing if it's, if it's at your liking. I usually say a week for us is about what we do. If you like it really sour and fermented, you could, you could go longer than that. But for us, a week tends to be right about that sweet spot. And so after it's been on the counter for about a week, it is fermented, it looks good, you're gonna just store it in the refrigerator and this will keep in the fridge for several months. And so that's why I like to make a big batch all at once, put those jars in the fridge, not have to worry about it again for several months, um, and then we'll make another big batch a few months later and have it and just use a little bit at a time. So that is how you make lactose fermented sauerkraut. You don't need special equipment. You don't need special ingredients. It really can be super simple. It's just a bit of a labor of love, taking some hard elbow grease and some time, but you got this, you can totally do it. So thanks so much for stopping by the farmstead today, and we'll see you next time.